Yeah. Yeah. Reddit coming in. <laughs> so we better start. We better start. Right. Come on, Pat. <laughs> this has a sound. I've done my radio. Welcome to another episode of Every Day is a School Day where we explore the unique experiences and sto stories that shape our schools. This is the second edition that we will be video recorded thanks to our new sponsor, Stakelum's Work, Learn, Play. If you're on the hunt for top-notch office and school supplies, you've hit the jackpot. Stakelum's have been a staple in the community for over 50 years, severing everything from fancy stationery to children's toys, basically everything except this time machine. But hey, they're working on it. So next time you're in Turles, swing by Stakelum's, work, learn, play, and let's now dive into today's episode. So today we have the privilege to be joined by um, two very experienced um, educators who's go who are, we're going to talk about um, the pouches, the famous pouches. Um, we had the episode planned in advance of the pouches, so we're going to look at uh, mobile phone uses as a whole. However, I think, seeing that I have been plugging the social medias, and I have been asked by Paddy on numerous occasions over the last two weeks to say like, share, what's a like, share, subscribe. Um, uh, I'm going to focus on the emails as well. So we've got an email in um, on the last, or not, from last week's episode. And it was an SNA who's been working for 23 years in a mainstream primary school um, in Dublin. And she wanted to thank us for highlighting the importance and valuable role that SNA play in our education system. Um, she was really impressed, I suppose, with Brian and the fact that he was a huge example for everyone, including students in our schools as well. She really wanted to highlight uh, Paddy's uh, aspect that he spoke about, about job security, last in, first out, which is a constant in our profession. I suppose after last two weeks, two weeks ago's episode as well, I think it's important as well, and I suppose I probably should have thought about it at the time as well. You mentioned as well about an SNA was equal to a third you mentioned that as well. Could you elaborate a bit more on that for us? It's a, that's in a ASD class, we say. So a third of a, a third of the child has access to a third of an SNA. What that means is, we'd say in an ASD class there's six students. So that means then that the school is entitled to have two SNAs. Yes. For those six students, so they don't have full access to an SNA. And it's very hard sometimes to explain that to a parent, but that's the way it works for ASD class. Now there is except, exceptional circumstance that you can apply for a full time SNA in an ASD class, but doesn't happen that often. Excellent, excellent. No, so that's what that means, a third of an SNA. Excellent, excellent. I think that was important to clarify that as well from the last day. Um, in terms of the email, to go back to it as well, um, very, um, I suppose the email was very, what's the right word? Complimentary. complimentary. That's the yes, word, I is. That's what you're yeah, looking for. That's it, yeah, that's it, that's <laughs> it. And also, I suppose, going off topic at the start of the episode as well, Diz is also very popular locally as well. <laughs> um, myself and Paddy got a kind of a slight dig. Uh, there was uh, there was one man on the physio table and told us that Diz is very polished. <laughs> so well done, Diz. Thank you. Well I'm, done, Diz. something. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, many things as well. So uh, I think we're going fairly well on that as well. Our correspondence from the last day as well, um, was really, I suppose, thought-provoking for everyone. The feedback has been uh, very positive on that. So we'd like to thank Brian again from for his time from the last day as well. So uh, Just on the, the contract, I know that there was a union meeting for SNAs there last week as well, and I think the the contract of being permanent is definitely on the table. Brilliant. They're fighting hard for that. Brilliant. So that's good news. Brilliant. Super, super. So I suppose important as well, we... Um, referred back to the previous episode as well and the uh, correspondence from the previous uh, episode and I suppose we'll move on to today's episode in when we're focusing on uh, mobile phones. Mobile phones couldn't be any more topical as well so um, I suppose uh, before we I suppose delve into our experience as well I'd like to welcome our guests uh, to today as well Um, I suppose rather than me trying to surmise your experiences I might I might go with the delegation. Delegation is very part of leadership. So uh, if you want to just uh, briefly introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves. He said he wasn't going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks about that. Uh, okay, so my name is Sean. Uh, I, I've been teaching for a long, long time. Uh, and I have been 27 years as a guidance counsellor. Uh, and the school that I work in, we have just introduced the phone pouches. So I'm here to give our... Um, I suppose experience of that and what we hope is going to happen as a result of it. So, 
Okay. Uh, my name's Emery. I'm a teacher. What do I know? <laughs> I'm an Irish teacher and I'm working in Dungarvan and I introduced the underpatches to our school last year and I'll just give an insight into how it's gone for us so far. Excellent. On the first episode, uh, when Des mentioned about discussing something later in the episode and my first question was on that as well. So um, I've, I've had to go straight in as well. So mm. we might just uh, maybe get a, maybe a bit of an account of how the Yonder Pouches have worked in your experience. Overall, it's been quite positive, very positive, to be fair. Um, we, by bringing them in, we have found the students are more engaging within the classroom, but they're also more social outside of the classroom, um, especially notable when on a bus, say. Um, like, if you remember when we used to go on trips, I remember myself, you'd be singing, they'd be laughing and joking. That was nearly all gone because the phone would come out instantly, and no matter how hard you tried to police it, it just wasn't working. Whereas I brought off my groups last year on a bus trip, and it was all back and it was actually fantastic to actually listen to so um, parents are really positive about it they are very happy that something is being done about it um, I've had a few emails asking me if there was any chance I could organise it for their own house <laughs> so um, things like that so overall yeah it's been a good experience definitely what, what would you feel Amory, was the main reason why you yourself pushed for it in your school why I pushed for it in the school um, I suppose we had like you'd have instances of teacher student kind of conflict um, and then she, she, our teachers being left responsible because you have to take the phone off or whatever so there was a lot of issues around it and then I had like I still remember it I had a young friend he was on the phone and he saw me didn't bother him he kept on the phone he was on the phone to another student in another school and I just kind of said to him afterwards when he eventually hung up I said why did you stay on it you could see me I couldn't leave my bro hanging was the answer I got and I just went oh my god <laughs> mm -hmm. so that was kind of one of the things that drove me to it but I also didn't like the fact that like our school schools generally should be noisy <clears throat> you should have kids laughing and joking and all that and I found the school was getting quieter even though our numbers were increasing in the school and you know so and you see it once the phones are released and they're going out there it's nearly zombie mode for all the word they're going out the heads down and it's like they're, the finger is just scrolling the whole time like so but while they're in school from the 9 to 4 like we don't have that you can just hear the, the laughter basically and what the noise way, is back what way does it work in Rio what, what is the pouch like what, what it's, a, it's a neoprene pouch um, basically you're not just dependent on the pouch we found it's also the policy so um, when I was researching it um because I'm a local Ballantee as well, so I had students coming in from all over the country basically to learn Irish in the in Kloshnaringa. So the other thing that I um I was doing is like I was asking them, what are you doing with the phones and all that? And there was a few came back with yonder. So then I was like finding out, okay, what school do you want to? So just to have a look at their policies online. So um once your policy is solid, it'll work basically, and the consequences of it. And communication. Communication is key. Like you just leave the parents know this is what's happening and all that like and you will get the support for it. But we'd say the pouch itself, so like you, it's the, 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 the student comes in the morning time. Is, nine is, o'clock. Is it their own pouch, an individual pouch or um for what we what we we've, we've done for the last few years assembly first day back after summer basically per year group. So like whoever's got that whatever year it is at that time, we all head to the, the hall. Everyone is um, issued a pouch basically. Um and the pouch works by there is like a pin and it just slots in and it just locks but there's no key to open it so the only person who has any way of opening it is the teacher so the teacher is in control of the pouch but the student is in control of their phone they're still responsible for it it's still on their person the only thing they can't do is they can't get into the phone to use it and is it big does the pouch fit in their pocket or do they bring it it would fit into the front pocket of the school bag okay yeah mm -hmm. so and that's kind of where it is it's about the same size as your, as your notebook yeah. there okay. yeah. this is just about that size you want to hold yeah, on yeah it's enough I, like <clears throat> it can hold kind of any size phone from what I can well, see like, so far do you, do you have to tell the lads to the students to turn off the phone do yeah, they can put turn it off in the pouch. They can turn it off. They can put it on airplane mode or silent. Um, turned off is probably best. There's no point in having it on if you can't um, use it. If you if if they, from our experience, if you turn it on and leave it in the pouch, then it just wears the battery down. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, because it's it's receiving messages all the time, mm. yeah. uh, from other people, but mm. you know the kid can't hear them because they're mm. you know it, it's stopping it from yeah. from receiving the messages, but yeah. it's going into voicemail or whatever. What What would you say, Sean or Emery, to maybe somebody in the outside world who'd say, well, they just shouldn't be allowed to bring their phone to school at all? Like, is that somebody maybe speaking from a lack of experience, or what would you say? 
Um, I don't think it's feasible, to be okay. honest. Like, kids are so active these days. You've got football, you've got soccer, you've got hurling, you've gymnastics, you're swimming. There's so many activities. Kids are going left, right and centre. And there, there's buses as well that's travelling, like, or anything like that. Like, if you if you miss their lift, say, if the child mm-hmm. missed their lift, how are they meant to contact a parent? Okay. So And it's also the parents being able to con- them, uh, contact them after school. So that option is still mm-hmm. there. So they can bring the phone into school. The phone is put into the pouch. Then the pouch is uh, it's opened once they're leaving the premises and they're able to contact mum and dad and say, I'm heading to the bus or whatever. So that option is still there. Yeah. Like it's a safety concern. So it's a recognition that phones are a necessary part of yes. life. But yeah, yes. like whether we like yeah. it or not, they're here to stay. stay. They yes. are necessary. They are needed. But I suppose what we need to do is control the usage that our kids and our teenagers have over them, basically. Mm. Well, they are very much a social uh, element to yes. us, you know, because <clears throat> let's say asking the kids to you know when they put the phone back on as they're leaving the school uh, I was talking to one of them recently and you know she, she was turning the phone back on and as soon as she turned it on next thing you hear ping 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 yeah. and I was saying I, I counted about 50 pings <laughs> like all of the phones from everybody in the school are turned off yes. where are you getting these from well these are from other schools these are from okay. my friends in other schools mm. yeah, yeah. now like if, if they weren't in the pouch she'd be getting those all day long yeah. as well as the, the messages that she Very was getting in, in, in the school and you're kind of going yeah how can she concentrate how can she focus I mean we have difficulty with, with, with our phones yeah. you know Petty you were saying in relation to watching a match yeah I have to scroll I have to even when I'm watching a match on television I'm still scrolling to see <coughs> results for of other oh, matches yeah. I just can't focus on one thing anymore because of the phone mm. yeah. so, it's, actually, so it's a I social it, thing too I, as well isn't I it I said it to my wife Jesus there's a business idea there where you could have a pouch for relationships. <laughs> Just, you know what I mean? Like, if anyone wants to go with that statement, like, you, know, you want to put your wife into the pouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's okay. You better read it that pa- first. Paddy reading is another business idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, have, I have a question. I, I said this to my TYs when I, actually a few weeks ago. I said it to him about the pouches, and uh, I said to him, "What would you feel about pouches coming in?" Because they knew, obviously, mm. Sean, your your school had had uh, brought it in and uh, no way sir that can't happen can it like how did you did you have the parents council and the student council involved in that decision did you do surveys or what what did you do we approached them and um, the first part, the group of people that I approached was obviously management in the school and then after the management it was the staff and then there was voting issues on it and then once it had passed all that, then I went towards the Parents Association Um, I spoke to them about it. So they were quite positive about it. Um, Student Council after that. And interestingly enough, the seniors were able to tell me, yeah, something is needed to be done. Um, Our juniors were not happy. Yeah. So and that's where kind of they were just not happy that it was coming in. But mm-hmm. I think once it came in for everybody, that was the big thing. Yeah, something similar in our place that the you know the, the when the idea was mooted first, okay, the, the students were all going as yours mm. were saying no, you can't do that. That, that you know, it's not possible. Mm. Nobody mm. would vote for that. But as it turned out, mm. the the senior students, particularly, and a lot of the senior students now, we're finding us are, are actually leaving the phones at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. They, they just don't need it anymore. Yeah. They're sort of saying yeah. it's it's fine if something emergency yeah. happens, you know, we'll be able to use the office, and the office will be able to contact our parents or yeah. whatever, yeah. but. Uh, it's the junior ones yeah. who, who are having that difficulty. Mm, yeah. But going back to in your, one of your points too in relation to the silence, we were finding that was a huge thing that the mm. kids were getting quieter and quieter mm. and at break time yeah. they were, you know, they might have been sitting in groups but they were actually even talking yeah. to each other in groups. Yeah. Yeah. Like I might have been sending Des a message, I'm sitting here, there's Des. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we're sending messages to each other about other conversations that were going on or whatever mm. uh, when they were walking down, you know, at lunchtime. And even during the COVID time, when they were mm-hmm. weren't supposed to be having the phones, they were outside getting fresh air. You'd see within the group that there's at least one or two of them with yeah. the head down, yeah. and a few others mm-hmm. were kind of you know yeah, okay. keeping an eye on, on making sure that the teacher wasn't yeah. take the phone or yeah. whatever. But and the imagine, heads were down all the time. Just listening to both of you there as well, it must be important that <coughs> the phone is not being taken off them and locked away. <coughs> it's, it's been there; it's still in their possession. You see, that's the thing, it's yeah, their property. It's their property. And, yeah. But it's not even that by, by confiscating it as such. Yes. You have a whole different issue then of responsibility for it. Okay. And this is a piece of equipment that's worth a couple of hundred euros. Yeah. If that goes missing, who's it going to land on? Yeah. Only the person who has it confiscated it or whatever. Yeah. So it was to take away all that, to leave them yeah. responsible for their own things. Because even so, over the weekend, then, Marie, I was reading a reaction as opposed to Norma Foley's announcement last week. I was reading online that someone had said, <clears throat> why can't schools just lock everyone's in a press? 
you know. Oh no, mm. no, 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 no. Because the well, the first thing that'll spring to mind is like you could have somebody who'll pick up two phones instead of one, yeah. and like if you have thirty phones, like and then ten people, twenty people surrounding it, it's going to be very easy for someone to just take a phone. Yeah. That's a phone that could be eight or nine hundred euros gone. Yeah, and yeah. Might so the pouch returned. means it's still in their it's possession. It's their possession. Yeah, yeah. Can, I ask, they can, can I ask then? Though, yeah. I suppose everyone would heard would have heard of the nine million, right? Mm. But did your schools? Did the kids <clears> have to buy them themselves? They or rent what? them in our. They schools. rent them. Yeah, so there's a cost associated with that, like um, uh, between ten and twenty euros or something like that is what it was, and the parents pay it, and it's for the year. So um and that that's that's what that's the way it worked with us basically last year. So um and once that was paid then, um, they were all issued with a pouch. Yeah. Um. Oh, the nine million. Mm. What do you think, you, Amory? Is I don't it? agree with it. No. Okay. No, I think if the parents can pay eight or nine hundred euros for a phone, that they should be able to be happy enough to realize like that this is a good thing, and that it's ten or twenty euros that are whatever the cost is associated with it. And the parents should be happy enough to pay for it if they're happy enough to pay that amount for a phone. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Sean? I, to be honest with you, I suppose we're only seven weeks into into the year, yeah. seven seven mm -hmm. weeks into to using it, and it's such a uh, a positive experience mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the students uh, and the staff. The staff are saying that you know the students are looking up. Yeah. That makes a huge, big, big mm -hmm. difference. You know, walking in the corridor, they're looking up, they're not heads down in the classroom or outside on the buses, as you were talking yeah. about, going to, mm -hmm. you know, matches or whatever. You know, it's it's a different kind of student that you're finding. And because it was explained to them, you know, really well as to why we were doing this mm -hmm. and that it was for their benefit, they've all bought into it. Mm -hmm. So a kid who comes in in the morning and doesn't have their pouch or forgot their pouch or whatever it is, goes straight to the office mm -hmm. and asks, says, I forgot my pouch. And the person in the office asked them to turn off the phone. They put it into an envelope and it's kept in the office until the end of the school day. So and then, then the is normal as allocation, <coughs> say, an investment in well-being or... I, I think it's I think it's OK. You can, you know, some people would say that it's a, you know, it's a, it's a quick fix or it's a, a nine million that's going to buy votes. OK, mm. you, you could look at it negatively like that. But to be honest with you... Uh, and I suppose, you know, in, in Colossians and East Kicking and Care, where, where, where I teach, uh, we're hoping that, you know, we, we had made the decision before Norma mentioned the nine million. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to be able to recoup some of that money back. Mm -hmm. OK, so so don't get rid of it now, guys. Don't 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 don't, don't, don't diss it completely. OK, until we get some of the money back. Yeah. Uh, we paid for them. I don't think we, we rent them out, yeah. but it was 20 euros each. No, I think that it has the, mm -hmm. the benefits have definitely outweighed. The, the negative uh, elements of it. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are some kids who, who you know, who may need it more than others. Um, but I think that we're doing the best we can as we go along mm -hmm. in, in kind of almost a learning curve, you know, who are the who are the kids that may need a little bit of, you know, it can't be a one stop that, yeah. that means everything to everybody. You know, there has to be a little bit of leeway. Mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of the pouch with yep. the magnet, like because it's instead of the kid just being in control of it and using it whenever they like, the teacher can actually control the circumstances. It can be used. Okay. It can still be taken out. It can still be used within the classroom. Even if you have a kid who who has um, diabetes, there's a different type of pouch for that child so that they can access their phone for fear that anything will happen. Like so, there's the, what I liked was the broad range of actually choice that yeah. surrounded it. It wasn't just blanket. No, it's locked away. That's it. Like. You mm -hmm. could adapt it, and that was the thing yeah. that probably. Can you explain a bit about the diabetes, Emery? Really yeah, sorry. the that's pouch a, is that's a different, different type of pouch. It's a different type of pouch. It's for anybody who is diabetic, especially because nowadays they have the thing that the phone can read on the on the arm. Yeah. So the pouch is actually Velcro, but the beauty there where 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 you get covered that yeah they can access that at any time. But first of all, you're going to know if if a child is on the phone and if it's for their diabetes or if they're trying to text somebody. You know, there's a massive difference there. Yeah. Like they're they're scanning something on their arm for their medical issue, yeah. um, mm -hmm. their head's going to be down and the thumbs are going to be going mental when they're mm -hmm. typing out a text. The yeah. pouch itself is Velcro, but the other thing that you have to make sure to have that backed up is your policy, and yeah. that's where the policy kicks in. It's kind mm -hmm. of like if we catch your child with the phone out, um, but there it's a medical reason. That's totally different. If we catch them out with a texting, then the consequences kick in. And okay. that's where the, all the parents are on board. And I just devil's mm. advocates, right? Yeah. Can I just throw it out there? Like, I suppose in schools, gone very busy, paperwork, all that kind of stuff. Oh, Lord, yeah. Right? Mm. So you need the whole school community involved. You're talking yeah. about the office staff. Yeah. Probably more work for the office staff. Is it more work for teachers? Is it more work for SNAs? Or is there more work involved for teachers in this situation? Or is it easier for for 
staff? The feedback I have gotten from other staff members is it's fantastic. So mm. there is <clears throat> there's probably like nine o'clock in the morning is probably where the majority of the work is. It's just like you have to make sure that they all get the pouch to, um, to put the phone into the pouch and that the pouch is actually shot. Um, After that, then there might be spot random checks called out during the day just to ensure that, you know, everybody is still there. Um, and then like our computer system and all that would deal with the rest of it, whatever is logged on that. So that's kind of where the extra work is. But teachers seem to be very happy to do it because they see, find the environment is happy. I just, yeah. and I know Pat would have a letter to read out as well from one of our listeners, but this nine million thing is kind mm. of a, that's in my head a little bit, yeah. right? And I know people will have, they would have contacted us over yeah. kids not getting school placements, not having enough SNAs, not having 100%. enough resources. 100%. Like, is there a simpler way of doing it? Like, I know in my own school, what we try to do, we'd see it's down to consistency, what you try and do. If you see if you see someone on the phone, and I think that's what the letter would be about, Pat, we just say, phone, confiscate it, up to the office. Yeah, um, what, I f what we found with it is the whole issue became very black and white for the student wasn't even just for the, like anybody else for them if the phone is not in your pouch that's it yeah, we, and we, we, we have to that be that black and white yeah. and that's what it did for us they're, they're policing it themselves actually mm -hmm. okay. yeah you know which is is, is really important in, in itself mm -hmm. um because you know if if a phone goes off generally now they're, they're quite embarrassed mm -hmm. you know uh, and we had one young fellow who, who, who had some issue with his phone and it actually was his alarm clock it went off every five minutes. Mm. He couldn't, you know, turning off the phone was mm -hmm. the only thing that he could do, but he had already put it into the pouch. Mm -hmm. So by the time the, you know, the end of class first period was done, he was mortified. Mm -hmm. And everybody was going to just sort of say, Look. so the teacher went and locked it. He yeah. turned it off, put it back in. Mm -hmm. And you have that kind of situation. Yeah. And I understand what you're saying in relation to nine million. I'm not saying this is good, uh, a good use of those resources, you know, and therefore don't put the money in elsewhere yeah mm. the money should be going in elsewhere That's anyway, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good point. And, yeah and you're talking yeah. about yeah. serious serious yeah. investment in the future and the present lives yeah. education and mm. welfare and wellness of yeah. our schools in relation to snas in relation yeah. to ot's in relation to assessment of needs yeah. in relation to you know yeah. there's just so many things that should be yeah. absolutely yeah. accepted as this is what's what is done why i think it's yeah. the parents who should be paying for yeah. the pouch yeah. and the nine million should have went down that route. And I think we're, ta we're, we're talking, and, and Pat might talk a little bit more about this, mm. but we're talking about a secondary school, and I think it has to come maybe in primary school first as well. Definitely. Mm. It, I think like, there should be a ban. Now, I know mm. there, that there is something on in mm. Waterford at the moment where they're trying to get the, all the, the local schools primary are, schools yeah. to stop. Pat, you know a bit about... You some uh, corresponds there, Pat, would you? Yeah, well, I suppose, I suppose the, the important thing there, I suppose, <clears> from uh, what you've said as well, I think we're all kind of on board. I think mm. the fact that the students are, I suppose, on board with the, the benefits of less phones, because I know... Uh, before the Olympics, I was reading a bit about Reese McLenahan, and he doesn't look to, at the phone until two o'clock, even if he's fifteen minutes in between his various practice. Because I know myself, if we're on the phone more, you know, you're, I think yeah. mentally you're not as uh, mm -hmm. you're not as sharp as well. But uh, I think the big thing, um, what you said, Sean, there as well about the fact that it's not denying me to see the fact that is maybe a lot of people in education, uh, maybe ourselves included, were focusing on the fact that it's nine million euro and where that could be spent elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, before Christmas, there was a 10 million euro give, given to a STEM grant. I know secondary school in Limerick got any money from the STEM grant. So I think there's more the fact, you know, that there's a certain number of, or certain nine million, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Myself and Paddy were home, discussing how many bike sheds you could build with nine million, mm -hmm. but that's, a, that's another podcast. Mm -hmm. But that's, a, that's, a, that, that's maybe two episodes of a podcast. <laughs> but, uh, that's been one bike shed. On one bike shed, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, at, yeah. to say at a primary level, we'll say, I think it goes back to, I suppose I was talking to some people in Greystones as well, their movement has become it takes a village so mm -hmm. like not buying yeah. a phone it's not it's not a, it's not a school concern it's a parent yeah. I actually mm -hmm. discussed this with someone last July at 3 o'clock in the morning in a pub and, about and, and you got quite heated on the phone you know? <laughs> I did. He's, he's very passionate about I this I am now. I did I got quite heated just real enough I apologise to Paddy afterwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah he was very passionate about it yeah. yeah. alright Paddy it's okay yeah. it's okay <laughs> was it the topic the pub or the 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> the topic the topic <laughs> the topic <laughs> the topic <laughs> but um, it was about um, their child had a phone at 9 and this parent was telling me that they were able to keep an eye on them uh, via social media app and I was saying what what are they doing with a phone all the friends have a phone I was told 
Mm. And I said, yeah, well, I could have given them different examples mm-hmm. about if mm-hmm. all your friends did this and things well, and they didn't want you know the student to be, or the child to be picked on as well. So mm-hmm. I think that goes back to the community yeah. aspect as well. It's a societal you know, issue. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. Yeah. Is, and Cause it needs to start way earlier. Yeah. It does, yeah, because we were talking before we started as well about you no know, phones at seven or uh, seven or eight year olds, and I think mm-hmm. a big point from what I was hearing there was the fact that the student could have a phone worth seven or eight hundred euros. And that's a big thing, because I was in a school now and they were talking about devices and they were going one-to-one, but the device was only worth 250 or 300 euro. And they just said to me, the phone going around in their pocket could be seven or 800 mm-hmm. euros. If not more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, depending yeah. on what brand and but, all that. But that I suppose as, as well, just one other thing popping into my head as you're discussing yeah. it is, is I suppose there are certain places that the teacher doesn't have access into the student's toilet, for instance, or, you know, so mobile phones being in a pouch mm-hmm. are not being taken out in, in the student's toilets. Yes. It's not being used for bullying. It's not then something being presented on social media afterwards or even if people aren't being recorded in the classroom and there's various things like that that maybe that's where Norma's coming at it from in terms of the funding that she sees there is a wider impact issue. or issue yeah. around maybe protection of, of people in our schools so it's not just about maybe banning access to phone it's about protecting people actually mm-hmm. I, I, if I can come in I have a nice segue yes. there because um, Norma Foley wrote an article in yes, ye, uh, yesterday's Irish Independent we'd okay. say I'm just going to read the first paragraph there, if that's alright to catch up or to link in does that mm-hmm. like a good segue <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up in a pre-mobile phone era where picking up your messages meant going to the shop and Bluetooth was what you got after eating it Mr Freeze will say I think they were tin pee that time but I'm going to I like the first paragraph yeah. but I'm going to go down um, along because I like this part as well I recently directed all our post primary schools to ensure mobile phones were banned during the entire school day but I was conscious there was a need to offer support to our schools to implement this on a consistent basis across the country I think that goes back to what you said about the policy yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, and whether uh, taking them out, we'd say, and I just there's another small bit about the pouch. One school principal who implemented this system told the Department of Education the school had to use the St Vincent de Paul grant to assist families who could not afford to buy a pouch for their child. I am bringing in this mobile phone storage scheme so that all children will be treated equally. So I suppose that's just a, I suppose a contrasting I suppose mm. argument as well mm. I suppose um, for mm. children but I suppose schools have been great for 20 or 30 years we're always I suppose cognizant of yes. the child that may not be able yeah. to afford yeah. yeah. there is course, a movement yeah. towards that isn't there in terms of the free books for primary now free yeah. books for junior cycle and every child up being up treated senior equal, cycle, senior cycle. Yeah, yeah. So. and eventually free meals for all primary schools not just the Desh schools so that's our that is, yeah. 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 But, but there is that movement isn't it to, to try and treat each child equally yeah yeah yeah. 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 and on the food thing is, uh, is big at the moment actually mm-hmm. as well so that's, a, that's another thing. I, I, going back to our friend Norma there um, <clears throat> I suppose like when, when you think about it, she's pumping the 9 million in there now but there is, there, like, Google Classroom is a big thing now in our school. Mm. So teachers mm. use Google Classroom, mm. right? And would say, teachers use, say, right, lads, take out your Google Classroom there and do whatever on the, on their yeah. phones, mm. right? So it's used for an educational purpose. Mm. Does that still, can of that course. still happen? Yep. Of course, yeah. Or, mm. right, I, like, should Norma pump the money into buying extra Chromebooks for every class in, in a school? Would that be a better way of spending it, or...? I don't think you'd never ever manage to buy like mm. we are up at eleven hundred students. So you're looking at eleven hundred. I know you probably it's probably so, unrealistic, but yeah, no, I, I think we're nine hundred two. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, don't, yeah. Don't but be, like schools are not resourced IT wise. Yeah. Yeah. And Pat, you know that from going around yeah. to schools. Yeah, schools are under resourced in a lot yeah. of ways, yeah. including yeah. IT. Yeah. 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 But as, as a guidance counselor, like obviously I would be using the, the let's say the IT an awful lot, mm. either both for doing research or for contacting colleges or applying to the CAO and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, and it's much better if it's on their own devices but for my situation what I do is I say to let's say my sixth year class that I have on on Friday okay this Friday you're going to be you know, you know you'll need your phone mm-hmm. uh, and what I do is I get the mobile unlocker yes so the little yeah. mobile magnet and uh, for that class they bring in their phones I unlock their pouches yeah. 
we do the work that we need yeah. to do on it and then they put the phones back into the pouches and they lock it again. That's why yeah. the pouch is a really good middle ground, yeah. isn't it, for all of those situations. Yeah. And yeah. going back to something it's that you... Flexible. Yeah. 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 Something you mentioned as well, I was, I was mm. going to use it as a, a, a what is it, um, you know, the inconsequential yes. consequences or the unthought of consequences. Yeah. A couple of, of students came and said that it's actually much easier now to get into the bathroom. Yeah. You can you, because the the stalls mm-hmm. aren't aren't being occupied by people who are talking mm-hmm. to their friends, yeah. Yeah. their buds or whatever it is yeah. elsewhere, or doing their TikTok selfies or uh, whatever. Of course, they don't want to go to the bathroom anymore. Well, there's a lot there's a lot yeah. less of that yeah. of, of that yeah. movement, yeah. and and they're not under the pressure because, yeah. you know, it, yeah, it might be important for you to keep your your friends up and be you know be a buddy to somebody, but some of them are overwhelmed, and maybe this yeah. comes back to where where you come into it in terms mm-hmm. of the counselling, yeah. uh, but they're overwhelmed by the amount of messages and the amount of yeah maybe negative stuff or oh, trying yes, to help yes. somebody like my friend is um you know you know he's in trouble yeah um i, I can't go to class because mm. i've got to listen to him or to mm. listen to her and, and you're so right sean i mean as you say the overwhelmed i mean a lot of adolescents that i would meet in counseling would talk about i have to have my phone on so my friend who's going through a really tough time can be in contact with me and i feel this kind of responsibility i'm, I'm their first person they'll think of messaging so having those hours in school mm that they know they can switch off the online world is probably a great thing. As, yeah. As and and maybe this idea that you were talking about, maybe some you know parents saying, could they have a pouch for home? Actually, mm. it's not a bad idea. Not a no, bad idea. Because a lot of those kids, particularly the ones mm. in fifth and sixth year, the senior cycle, are actually getting messages from friends maybe who are, let's say, school refusers or who are having difficulty yeah. coming to school yeah. at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Yes. And the kid thinks that I'm the only one that can mm. help save this person yeah. from doing something yes um you know they they don't know how to contact mm. an adult about this they don't yeah. know how to contact yeah. the service yeah. Yeah. they come back into school the following day they're as you know anxious wound as, as wound up absolutely yeah. yeah and then you kind of say right phones away yeah yeah th- th- you're right and, I, and, and I think maybe even this measure by schools sends out the message to young people growing up that there are times when you do need to switch yeah. off your phone so as, as you say Sean maybe the same applies to home mm. there are times when we should absolutely put it away whether we're sitting to watch a film with yeah. the family or just allowing yourself to think <laughs> giving oh, yourself yeah. some thinking time can I ask you a question this from mm-hmm. a counselling point of view do you think phones are an addiction uh, potentially yes yeah absolutely and I, I suppose even uh, the two addictions that I'm seeing more and more of um, one of them would be vaping but the second one would be mobile phones and uh yeah, I suppose uh, without doubt, it's it's the thing. Even as what Sean was talking about, this feeling that I have to be ready to respond. I suppose that same kind of fight, flight, or freeze nearly kicks in for certain kids. Kind of feeling, I've heard the ping. I have to answer it, and I have to be in touch with what's happening with my group of friends. Um, or even what's really difficult is they see their group of friends are discussing stuff that they're not part of, or are doing something, and they're being excluded, um, and that can drive somebody completely you know, mm-hmm. over the edge at certain times, you know. Um, so, yeah, it, it has an awful effect at times in that respect, yeah. I, I would think, though, we have to accept that they're here to stay mm. and it's about, like anything in life, it's about balance, trying to achieve balance in life. But there's all the other things, though, that we can, can bring in. I think that, that maybe this is where talking with the parents and, and going the next step because it was almost like we had a consultation. Mm. You said, OK, now we've implemented it end of story mm. but I think there's more to it to, to be able to go back and talk with parents and say what can what can we do now I yeah. mean okay very few of the of the, the first years can read the, the regular clock you know yeah, it has to be a digital yeah, clock yeah. they don't know what time it is or what day it is unless they check their phones yeah. and they're taking the phones to the bedrooms at night as alarm clocks yeah. even That's spreading point, predictive yeah. text and, 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 mm. oh yeah mm. but if you can say you can't bring your phone efficient. you can't bring your phone to bed mm. you can't bring it down to yeah. the bedroom yeah. okay none of us will uh, and mm. we will get an old fashioned alarm clock and it'll yeah. wake don't worry yeah. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a huge point I was in the staff room on Thursday and uh, one like that the parents had implemented no phones in the bedroom policy mm. Mm. and then the, ch- uh, the, stu- or the children or the teenagers said to the parents uh, how come you need to bring your phone to the bedroom? Mm-hmm. So all phones in the house. So I suppose it goes back to the role modelling yeah. Yeah. part yeah. as well. Exactly. You know, exactly. so it's really important. Yeah. It's interesting if you kind of go back a couple of generations. Okay, I, I don't know, you know I'm much older, obviously, than most people here. But you know, the situation that we had, let's say, within our home growing up was that that my father wouldn't allow your friends. Your friends could come into the house. Your friends could play with you, but your friends couldn't go to your room. Okay. Mm. Nobody, mm-hmm. no stranger, yeah. 
an orphan in mm. Orchid was allowed to be in any room. Yeah, and yeah. the reasoning behind it was, well, what happened if something happened? Or if somebody claimed that yeah. something happened in your room? Yeah. We're letting our kids off into their bedrooms with phones at the age of 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. And there are strangers coming in on their phone. Yeah, and there's sure. all sorts of stuff coming in the mm-hmm. phone. I, we had uh, we had Bernard was in for um, uh, Webwise kind of a talk there a few years ago, and I really an analogy they used was um, you wouldn't tell your parents at half seven that you were going down to the pub to talk to strangers, mm-hmm. and that's what you're doing when you're on your Xbox or you're on your phone speaking to strangers. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's a that's a huge point to both. Yeah. Uh, you know, bringing the phone into the bedroom and the negative mm-hmm. consequence of that. But, but I think you've brought up another point there that often one concern I have is some parents might say, well, my child is not on a mobile phone, but they're on an Xbox yeah. online. Mm. And online again, online. and online is yeah. online. And very often the person they're online with, you don't know. Mm, now, yeah. th- of course, there would be some who will be absolutely online with their, their peers from their school. But there would be lots of people who say, well, my friend in Norway or my friend in Holland or my friend in America, you know, and to them, it's a friend. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. don't see the difference. Yeah. No, that's, uh, so, so bring it back kind of to the mobile phone and the pouch and what we're talking about. Yes. You know, for a period of time, even within the school, it takes that pressure off. Yeah. And it takes that kind of, you know, it gives them an opportunity maybe to to think. And to be able to see the wood for the trees, because sometimes mm. when you're so overwhelmed with, yep. you know, I, that ping, oh, I, I have I have to check, it might be my friend who's upset or it might be my friend who's, yep. or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, you were saying that, that, that somebody was saying, was it um, the, the um, gymnast McClellan? Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't no. look at it. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying, saying it takes 20 minutes to get your concentration back yeah. Mm. Yeah. once you have, you yeah. know, so if you've this gone off 50 yeah. times in your pocket, like, there's no chance you'd be able to I know lads in GA and Connor. Uh, kind of safe from our sponsor like he would have told me he switches like, when he's playing big matches whether it be for tip or for turtles he turns off his phone the weekend prior to the match because mm. he doesn't want anything to do with his phone yeah, yeah, yeah. when I'm yeah. trying to read over chapters I take to watch the phone off because you do you lose so mm. much time mm. yeah. and all the rest of it as well but uh, mm. I suppose one question I suppose uh, on the Arctic as well Norma said about the phones uh, or the pouches are property of the school they can be reused. Like, are they, I notice you're no enough in the experience as well, are they, or do you think that they will, there will be longevity in them? Like, could they be two or three years of the same pouch? Or? Yeah, um, from our experience, like, um, we I, I collected all the pouches at the end of the year last year. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, there were some that weren't reusable. Um, but, um, to be fair, there was actually, there was an awful amount of them that were reusable and they're back out again this year doing the same job. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, there is longevity mm-hmm. in them. That's so they rent them again this year. They rent them every yeah. single year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just hand them up at the end of the year. It's just it, and literally the only reason we're we're actually collecting them at the end of the year is because like that'll go home, mm. and it'll be found in the darkest recess of a corner possible, <laughs> and won't be able to be found for September. So it's just so much easier if they're in the school because the first the minute they step back in, uh, they're down into the study hall, assembled and pouched. What what I'd love to is that we get feedback from. I suppose we've got it from your point of mm, view. Yep. It'd be lovely if a student maybe could email us in and just let us know what, mm. what they're thinking. E- e- and what's that email address again, Paddy? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. you do? The, the email address is every day is a school day podcast at gmail.com. And uh, just don't use your phone during the day. That's yes. it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're also available on the social medias. We have the X, which was Twitter, Instagram, and we got the Facebook up and running at last again. <laughs> <laughs> we had some issues with that, we'll say as well. But uh, I suppose uh, Paddy has a habit of uh, finishing with a, with a letter as well. I'm going to see can I read a letter as eloquently as Paddy? Uh, Paddy doesn't yes. like me using big words on the podcast. I swear he was reflective at the start. It's a tough job now, Padre. It is. It is. Um, so um, since uh, this, I suppose this is an email we've got from a, from a teacher as well. So since September 2023, St. Joseph CBS Nina has implemented a strict mobile phone policy to ensure a focused learning environment. The policy states that once a student enters school grounds, their mobile phone must be switched off and kept out of sight. If a student is found using their phone, it will be confiscated. The phone will be placed in a designated envelope and the student's name, class, any relevant comments and the teacher's signature will be recorded on the envelope before it is handed to the deputy principal's office. The policy applies not only during school hours but also during off-campus school activities. If students need to use their phones for educational purposes such as recording 
the PE task, the supervising teacher must seek prior permission from the principal using a designated form. Additionally, when students leave the classroom to use the bathroom, they are required to leave both their phone and school journal to be signed on the teacher's desk. This policy has proven to be very effective with minimal incidents of students being caught with phones since its intro introduction. When consistently implemented by all teaching staff, it ensures a smooth and distraction-free learning environment. And I think consistency mm, is a big one. Yeah, 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 a big yeah, one there. Yeah. Because I suppose like... Um, I suppose like the pouches in this instance, the envelope is serving as the yeah. same yeah. part as well. And I suppose the fact that these off-campus school activities brings us back to what yeah. you mentioned yeah. about mm. the bus and heads down and looking I, at the I phones. I like the way mm. they have to hand up their phone when they're going to the bathroom. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know, that's because mm. you're not going to be able to police it fully. Like if you're no, walking... So. Mm. Yeah. You're not. If, you're, if they're walking around yeah. with their phone yeah. in their pocket, they are going to... It's just yeah. a natural thing that they do. They take it out and have a look mm. at it. Yeah. 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 John, and what you hear sometimes then is... I was just checking the time as you yeah. Yeah. just checking yeah. the time like so yeah. Yeah, no. I know I do a, a poem with my fifth and sixth years now from Elizabeth Bishop about in the waiting room and it talks about her taking up the National Geographic magazine and reading it while in the waiting room and the dentist and they look up at me blank and I say what do you do if you're in a waiting room I take out my phone yeah. you know so I suppose I remember a time when there was a stack of magazines in a waiting room mm. you know so or even read a yeah. newspaper or even newspaper yeah. 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 yeah and I suppose from my point of view mm. that's the reason why the phone is so good I give a lot of my childhood on trains and uh, in waiting rooms as well yeah. and it's the fact I suppose I I, I talk about it now and again. I I sometimes a picture of you know the old orangey and road iron train, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. and I always wished I could have a, a TV in my pocket, and that's yeah. basically what we're <laughs> going around is. with. But the view you used to see out the window before you had the phone. You, you know, know, I was on, I was on the train an awful lot. Like <laughs> 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 the views were spoiled at that time. In the dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but is 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 the is the nine million a once off? Is it going to be yearly? Do you know, so Good like question. Yeah. It, 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 it says we're waiting for Norma to get back to us. No. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. D there's usually calls for a Norma for more funding in each podcast, <laughs> so we have to wait for that before we, uh, we finish it up, I suppose. But uh, all joking as I suppose, having listened to I suppose all the different um, experiences and opinion, I think we're all in agreement that the phones uh, doesn't equal social or positive social experiences. I think we're we're happy with. It. I think we're. Uh, the fact that the phone is away has been a game changer uh, from your experience mm. as well. Mm. I suppose from the letter here we see that there is other ways of doing it as well. And I think a mm. real big thing was, uh, Sean, what you mentioned about the fact that it's nine million for this. I think the big issue is, I suppose other stakeholders in education are worried there's nine million for phone pouches. But is there nine million for SNAs? Is there yeah. nine million for educational assessments? Is there um, uh, nine million for ICT and all the rest? It is the fact I think we're you know we're all maybe fighting from the one one pool of money or something mm -hmm. as well. So hopefully I, I kind of surmised I think we're uh, uh, from that as well. Um, I'm conscious of time as well because I saw the thirty the minutes. Or the disclaimer Paddy gave out to me the last time because I didn't mention the, the disclaimer. So the disclaimer is that this is our opinions. We'll say, and if you have any problems, you can contact Paddy or Gar. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's, no, it's just our opinions. I wasn't supposed to say the say the, the second part of it as well. I suppose before we finish up as well, I really want to thank um, our guests, you know, for the invaluable experience and the fact that they gave up their time to come to Monorail Studios here in Ballyporeen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Sh 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 Sham pays me by the minute. Say, every each time I say Monorail Studios, Monorail Studios, <laughs> and uh, I'll joke, I'll joke, and I say thanks a million for your input and your valuable, incredibly valuable input and your time and uh, your experiences. Thanks, thanks a million, Paddy, for all. For can all I just say effort. one thing as well? Like, and I want to say it live on on the podcast. Yeah. Of course, I said it off off cam, and he didn't really know that he is the reason I, I I am a teacher. I went back to him as I was in college, did marketing. I worked for a couple of years and went back into him and he, he basically said to me, why not do teaching? So, Sean, live on the podcast. Thanks a million. Thanks, man. And now I'm a big school for going as well. <laughs> I'm delighted. I'm delighted it was helpful to somebody. Yeah, thanks, yeah. And you did really well. Yeah. Yeah. I told him that the first day too. He shouldn't have gone into marketing. He should have gone straight yeah. to teaching. Yeah. Sure. I lived I'm really joking. Was it uh, Robert Frost speaking of poetry? Yes. I often use the example at the moment when I'm showing AI about the road not taken. Yeah, yeah. I took mm -hmm. the road not taken and made, made all the difference, we'll say, which is uh, important. But uh, I just want to thank Des as well for being polished thank as you. usual. <laughs> um, I'll and work on it for the two weeks' time. Oh, that's Polish good. myself up. That's good, that's good. I think uh, we'll, we'll end on that. And a special thanks as well to our sponsors, Stay Clums, Work, Learn, Play, and Tulsa. Thank you very much.